Everything you see around yourself is a result of physical idea. Somebody somewhere had thought about a practical idea and now you are seeing that idea in a form of product or services. Remember, practical idea is a key here, not just any idea. And that is what all about the feasibility report. You know, ideas are created every second. In fact, millions of ideas are created and destroyed every day. Well, not in a physical sense, but at least in your head. However, the problem is not every good idea is successful. Only great idea achieve its objective. So, how do you differentiate a good idea from a great idea? How do you exactly know the great idea in your mind is going to work? Well, the answer lies in feasibility report. So, what exactly feasibility report is? Well, by definition, feasibility report is a paper that examines the proposed solution and evaluates whether it's possible under certain constraints. Constraints could be anything. It could be financial, social, practical, environmental, technical, legal. Basically, anything that could make an idea impractical for a solution is a constraint. However, generating a good feasibility report is not an easy task. Several times, people struggle to write an effective feasibility report, just like Bob. You know, Bob, Bob is a senior analyst in his Fortune 500 company. He has been asked to write a feasibility report and he is stuck in a difficult situation. He don't know what exactly the feasibility report consists of and what he should write in a feasibility report. Actually, company CEO wants to move the manufacturing site from location A to location B. By doing so, CEO wants to save some money for the company. Now, the Bob need to understand the various issues like environmental issues, tax issues, savings, and so many other things which Bob need to consider in his feasibility report need to be analyzed and reported to prove the feasibility of the idea. But the thing is that Bob is doing it first time. The Bob's not sure what exactly going to be in feasibility report. He's not sure what are the sections and where he need to focus his effort. So the next question is, what is the structure of feasibility report? What are the sections which is usually included in a feasibility report and how to draft a feasibility report? Usually a feasibility report has five sections, which is basically introduction, background, requirement, evaluation, and conclusion. Let's understand the detail of each section and help Bob to draft his feasibility report. So, the first section is introduction. In this section, Bob need to introduce the problem and propose solution in detail. He need to simply explain what exactly the problem is and how he is trying to solve the problem through the proposed idea. Usually, the introduction section consists of three parts, executive summary, problem statement and solution. In executive summary, Bob need to briefly explain the overall view of the problem and the solution. Because remember, you know the feasibility report is going to be consumed by the top management. Usually they don't have so much time to go into the detailed report. That's why before going into much detail of the report, they would like to know what exactly the quick overview of this proposed solution is. The second part is problem statement. It's a concise description of an issue to be addressed or condition to be improved upon. It identifies the gap between the current state and the desired goal so that decision maker can make a decision whether to go ahead with the feasibility of this idea or not. The third part is solution. Simply a means of solving a problem or dealing with a difficult situation. Basically this tells the how the solution of the problem is going to meet the objective of the company. After introduction, now Bob need to explain the background. Background scenario is very important for the top management. They would like to know whether these ideas is actually aligned with the company's long-term vision and goals. Here the Bob need to provide all the contextual information of the problem and the solution and how it is basically a help the long-term strategy of the company. This could be overall view of company's operation. This also includes the long-term vision, goals, and also any short-term event which actually defines the company's objective. 
Usually, the background section consists of four parts that includes history and context of the problem, technology consideration, product and service marketplace, and the market strategy. In the history and context of the problem, Bob needs to simply provide the historical information regarding the problem and the solution. Then the second part is technology consideration. It's very important for any company to take any endeavor. They need to understand what technology they are taking, what technology they are going to be used. Third one is product and service. Now, every solution will lead to some sort of product or services. Whether there is a market for those product or services, this needs to be understand before going deep into the any problem solving approach. And then the market strategy. Any organization has a very fixed market strategy when they move into the business operation because that market strategy is directly related to their profit and loss. The third section is requirements. Requirements are the things that is needed or wanted to reach the solution. Also, sometimes they are called criteria selection because it includes the description or how you are evaluating the feasibility of a proposed solution. This basically tells you what are the things or the resources is required to do a feasibility report as well as if you decided to go ahead, what are the actual things or resources will be needed to reach its objective. The requirement section consists of four parts that is assumption and constraint, human resource and staffing, schedule and financial projection. Assumption and constraint, here Bob needs to explain what are the assumptions he is making while doing this feasibility analysis. Also, Bob needs to explain the, all the constraints which you found while studying this idea. Then, Bob needs to also explain what are the human resources and staff or the people he is required to do this feasibility. Also, he can project what kind of people or expertise will be required to complete this idea. Then comes the schedule. The timeline is very important for any endeavor. Remember, any idea which leads to a project will have to finish in certain timeline. And if you are not sure about the timeline, there could be possibility that your whole idea is no more valid. Then comes the financial projection. Remember, every effort which is being done in any company is basically leading to some sort of financial gain. Here, you need to explain what are the projected benefits in terms of finance which company will be getting if they pursue this idea. The next section is evaluation. This is basically the evaluating or finding the feasibility of any idea which basically means you have to do the feasibility study. Feasibility study is an assessment of the proposed idea. It analyzes the practicality of a projected solution and also it assesses how likely the project is going to succeed. This is a section where Bob needs to collect all the information which he received from the various section and then go in deep dive and understand the feasibility of the solution. This is the real work and the most time consuming step. Here Bob needs to devote all his effort and find out the feasibility of the idea. This is basically for identifying the key goals, relevant factor and examining the market research for the successful execution of the project. This helps management to make better informed decisions regarding which project get funded and which get scrapped altogether. This is the section where the Bob need to assess all other options. Proper risk assessment of the viable option should be done. There could be several risks associated with every idea. Bob need to understand what are the each risk and then assess what will be the impact and how he is going to mitigate all those risks. So, the next question is how to conduct the feasibility study? Well, there are several steps which Bob need to follow to perform the feasibility study. The first step is preliminary analysis. Yes, you have heard it right. Before doing any detailed analysis, Bob need to understand whether this feasibility study is justified or not. Why? Because remember, every study requires some effort. And to spend those efforts, Bob need to understand whether it make it work to do in deeper analysis or not. The second step is defining the scope. Here Bob need to define the full scope of the activity which he will be doing to perform this feasibility study. Then the third step is to do the market research which is basically related to the profitability of the idea. 
then perform the financial assessment. If any idea is profitable, then the Bob need to make sure whether the profit or the quantum of the profit is actually supporting the company's goal. Then the fifth one is assessing risk and providing the alternative solution. It's very important that Bob need to assess all the risks associated with the idea and then how is planning to solve those risks in case of those events are occur. Step six is reassessment of the study done so far. Remember, Bob is doing it first time and it's very important to have a relook of the, all the study which Bob has done. Here, Bob need to connect with his colleague or the team member to get their feedback. Based on their feedback, he can reassess all his ideas or findings. Based on the feedback he received from his team member, he can reassess all the information which he received in previous step. Then the final step is to make go or no go decision. Remember, it is a Bob who is collecting all those information. Bob has full information set which can help him to decide whether to go with this idea or not. So, after performing the feasibility study, the final section is about conclusion. Here, Bob need to conclude his message. This is basically the section where the Bob need to deliver his message to the management. He need to sum up the conclusion about the proposed solution, retrace the pros and cons of the solution. Also, here the Bob need to provide his final opinion, which includes recommendation whether the solution is feasible or not, or if there is any modification is required in the idea. So far, we have learned about the feasibility report, its key element, structure of the feasibility report, and steps for conducting a feasibility analysis. Now, there's another factor that is type of feasibility report, which also determine the, what will be the content of your feasibility report itself. And you might be also curious that once you submit the feasibility report, what happens uh, after that in terms of the business process? I mean, what kind of decisions are taken once you submitted the feasibility report? What happens when the feasibility report is accepted and approved by the management? So we are going to learn more about these concepts. Now, moving on to type of feasibility report. Based on idea and concept, all kinds of feasibility report can be divided into these four categories. First one is technical feasibility, financial feasibility, market feasibility, and organization feasibility. In technical feasibility, team checks for the accessibility of technical resource in the organization. In case, if technical resources already exist, then the team will check whether the team has ability to customize or update the existing technology so that they can meet the new ideas requirement or the objective of the company. Usually these kind of studies are very complex and they require a lot of resources to do technical feasibility. Next one is financial feasibility. This kind of feasibility report allows an organization to determine the cost benefit analysis. It gives a detail about the investment that has to be invested so that we can get the desired results or benefits. The factors such as total cost and expense are considered and also with this data company know what is their current situation in terms of finance and what kind of monetary values they can expect in future. Next one is market feasibility. It assess the industry type and existing marketing characteristics and improvement to make it better. The growth evident and the needed competitive environment of the company product and services which basically helps to determine the idea which company is thinking about is feasible or not. Basically, the preparations of sales projection can be a good marketing feasibility study example. Next one is organization feasibility. Organization feasibility focus on organization structures, which includes the legal system, management team, its competency, and so many other metrics or projectized environment. It checks whether the existing condition will suffice to implement the business idea. So, once you know the feasibility report and the type of report which is applicable to your idea, the next obvious question would be how logically the feasibility report fits into the business process. You may wonder, I mean, what will happen after you submit a feasibility report? And one common thing which I find most people, they are confused with feasibility report and business plan. So. Do you ever wonder is feasibility report is same as business plan? Well, the answer is no. Feasibility report is not the business plan. 
the feasibility report is prepared before the business plan. This is the purpose of the feasibility report is to determine whether the business is feasible or not. And once it's determined, then the business plan is prepared. So basically what happens when you submit a feasibility report to the management based on the, your report, management decide whether this idea is feasible and then they give a go ahead and after that you're going to develop a business plan which basically follows the outcome of your feasibility study and this lead to the identification of new business opportunity. Remember starting any business or any initiative requires investment. Investment of time, money, hard work and all the other available resource and before committing all those resource you would like to know whether that idea is feasible or not and that is where the feasibility report comes into the picture. Feasibility report is basically to know whether the investment is return worthy or not and definitely it's required a lot of analysis, calculation and estimate. At the feasibility stage you may not go into deep and do those analysis and calculation but definitely you will require some sort of basic analysis to arrive at the conclusion whether your idea is feasible or not and once your idea is approved then you will develop a business plan so business plan comprises a specific strategy and tactics which need to be followed to achieve the business goal so remember one thing your business plan basically follows the feasibility report so once your feasibility report is approved, management will give you a go ahead and then you are going to develop your business plan. So here are the key elements of feasibility report. First one, introduction, which includes your executive summary, problem statement and solution. Then the next section is background, which includes the history and context of the problem, technology consideration, product and service marketplace and the marketing strategy. Then the requirement section. Requirement section consists of assumption and constraint, human resource, staffing and other resource which is required for the idea, schedule and financial projection. Then comes the evaluation. Evaluation is the meat of the project feasibility report where you need to do the feasibility study, you need to explain the methods, then the alternative options, you need to identify the key goal and relevant factor and then examine the market research. And finally the conclusion. In conclusion, you need to give your final opinion, also state the pros and cons of the solution. Remember, practical and possible are the two key words here in any feasibility report. So in short, through feasibility report, management wants to know the idea which is proposed to them whether it will work or not. Remember, the feasibility report is written with a purpose to determine if plan action is viable or will the idea proposed will meet its objective or not? Well, the answer lies in feasibility report.